Right Podcast, your weekly dose of conservative news brought to you by Restoration of America. I'm your host, Hayden Ludwig, Research Director for Restoration News. And joining us today is Restoration News Senior Investigative Researcher Jeff Reynolds with a new report on the cult of climate science and how it's targeting you. Jeff Reynolds, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you uh, having me on. This is great. <laughs> it's great indeed. Now, I want to start with the fundamentals here and ask you a tough one. Why do you hate climate science so much? And of course, I'm <laughs> kidding when I say that. But you know, you and I both know that we hear constantly from the global warming left that we need to trust the science, follow the science. I think Dr. Fauci is the science. And yet you point out that so often what they say isn't actually science at all, or rather it's just junk science. Tell us what you mean by that. Your uh, quote about Anthony Fauci is, is dead on, right? Uh, because uh, as we saw with COVID, it's the same thing with climate science where there's a controlled narrative that they put into the terms of science. But as Richard Feynman once famously said, uh, science is the lack of faith in the ability of the experts. Uh, it, it's that's a paraphrase. I'm uh, not saying it properly, but uh, you get the you get the gist of it. That uh, science really is the uh, questioning of experts and the questioning of established knowledge. That's what science is: is to ask questions and to go into more detail than simply what's established. As, as what we know. If you look back throughout history, scientists have always challenged the established narrative going back to Copernicus and Galileo and even further than that, you know? So uh, people get in trouble with the government all the time throughout history for questioning the science that has been established uh, by official channels, but that's what we usually call breakthroughs once, once we actually start realizing what they're actually saying. So in other words, it's not really about consensus, it's about truth, right? Correct. In fact, consensus is not science at all. Uh, the the <laughs> search for truth is... Uh, the the search for truth is actually uh, never ending, and we are constantly revising what we know. Uh, it, it was uh, John Clauser actually won a Nobel Prize in 2022, a, 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 a physicist, for questioning uh, Albert Einstein. Uh, so, uh, and, and by the way, John Clauser uh, has come out and said there is no climate uh, emergency. So a, uh, he's one of several <laughs> Nobel Peace or no, Nobel uh, Prize winners in science who have come out and said climate science is not actually science. I wonder if that makes him the only Nobel Prize winning climate denier in the left size. Uh, not, not in, well, it may be in the left size, but not, uh, not by a long shot. There are several who have uh, questioned the, the, uh, the science behind climate change and the whole theory. So you say climate change. Let's talk about global warming. You know, everybody's right. been hearing this term since the late 1980s, but I actually would expect that many folks listening right now might be surprised to learn that definitionally, Global warming is really about CO2, that's carbon dioxide, and other gases having this warming effect in the atmosphere, you know, the infamous greenhouse effect, and not about the changing climate. And yet, as you and I both know, our media ruthlessly markets this term climate change. Jeff, why do these science believers play so fast and loose with the terminology? Well, the way they put it, they th they are trying to be more accurate by saying that it's climate change and not global warming. What it actually is, is the fact that they didn't witness global warming for a couple of decades uh, in the uh, in the measured uh, temperature stations around the globe. So they had to come up with a different term that was more um, I guess more accurate, but also would still lead people to conclude that they're still telling the truth. It's it, it's more propaganda than it is actual science. And one of the things that I put into my report on junk science behind climate change or global warming is the fact that for now 40 or 50 years, the uh, National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Association or agency, NOAA, the, uh, the weather agency of the United States government has been fabricating data 
uh, for up to 40%, I think, of the uh, weather stations across the nation, there are 1,200 weather stations ac across America where they've been recording uh, temperature data for 120 years. But many of those have gone inactive because either you know volunteers have retired or moved on, or the uh, the equipment is no longer any good, or whatever the case may be. You know these 120 year old stations are no longer recording data. So instead of replacing that data with actual observations, they're fabricating the data in 40 percent of those weather stations. So we don't even have accurate measurements of what the average temperature is. And the other uh, fact of that is the other factor that goes into creating this narrative of climate change is that uh, much of it is created using computer models instead of empirical data, instead of observed observational data. So uh, there's a lot of actual fabrication that goes on instead of observation. So Jeff, what you're saying is stunning to say the least. I mean, the entire <laughs> climate change, global warming, call it what you like, agenda here about saving the planet from carbon dioxide emissions from your car if you don't drive a Prius or from that plane that you took to Mexico last summer with your family, it's all fabricated. The data that it's based on to make that claim is fabricated. And you're pointing out that not only is that not science, it's actually an ideology and it's promoted and funded by our federal government. That is stunning. Yeah, to the tune of hundreds of billions of dollars that go into it at all levels of government, just in the United States. If you look globally, it's it's trillions of dollars. And so, yeah, you're absolutely right that it's it's being funded by the government and creating a narrative that doesn't match observational data. Another uh, study came out within the last few years that showed that 80% of the uh, observational data that still exists, that is actually still being taken. 80% of the temperature stations across the United States are not showing warming and are in fact showing cooling across the last couple of decades. So uh, that's- Wow. Yeah, and that's that's EPA data. That's actually the data that they have on their website uh, that people have looked at and said, well, wait a minute, you're not actually showing warming, so what are you talking about? And and again, it gets back to your point, right? They, they had to change the term from global warming to global climate change to make it sound like it was still a valid theory. So uh, instead of showing a definite warming trend, they can't do that. And so what they're doing instead is saying that things like uh, hurricanes are getting more intense or more frequent or that flooding is getting more intense because of uh, climate change or that wildfires are getting more intense and more frequent, especially in the West Coast where I used to live. And what they're doing is completely discounting any other variables that could be a factor in these things happening. First of all, the the uh, we go back to the hurricane thing. There was a, a 12 year period where a category two, three, or, or sorry, three, four or five hurricane didn't even make landfall in the United States. So they can't even back up their claims with observations. With the wildfire situation, they've spent decades not clearing out the underbrush and creating more fuel to create more fires, again, for uh, environmental reasons, and then blaming it on climate change. None of it holds up to scrutiny. As a native Southern Californian, I can attest to the entire wildfire claim that you've just talked about. It's absolutely true. Um, it's something that the Native Americans five centuries ago when Christopher Columbus came here knew about and practiced, um, you know, clearing dead brush all the way from North America to the very bottom of South America. This is this is nothing new. It takes an overeducated climatologist to tell us <laughs> this is wrong. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a, that's a really good point. It, uh, uh, I think Thomas Sowell had a quote about that, that uh, only somebody who is that educated could believe uh, such nonsense, right? <laughs> And uh, exactly. I think he's talking about socialism, but we're really talking about the same thing, right? Uh, and uh, it, it's it, it really is true. You, uh, who are you going to believe, the climate scientists or your lying eyes? You know, it, it's 
uh, if you look around and you look at the the temperature trends, uh, and, and this is part of my report too, by the way, we don't even have a baseline to know what a normal average temperature is or should be, or even if there, if there should be an average temperature, because so much of it relies on computer models uh, and mathematical modeling. And, and we saw that recently with the Michael Mann uh, trial uh, over the hockey stick where he uh, uh, accused uh, uh, Mark Stein, the columnist of defamation for calling him a fraud, you know? So uh, there's so much of this that is so questionable. And the more you dig into it, the more you realize it's all built on sand. There's no foundation to it whatsoever. So speaking of foundations, let's talk about the most demonized gas in the world, carbon dioxide, the infamous CO2. Right. We know that this is at the heart of the entire global warming, well, scientific claim or ideological claim, whatever you'd like to call it. But, you know, I mean, really what we're talking about is what I like to call, and this is a technical term, breathing, right? I mean, <laughs> Jeff, tell us, is CO2 polluting the planet? Is it is it dangerous to human health? Is it time that Joe Biden bans dangerous exhalation? What are your thoughts? <laughs> Well, they've actually started coming out and saying that, that uh, there are, uh, they've shown, there was a study that came out recently that showed human breathing has uh, trace amounts of gas, uh, of greenhouse gases other than CO2. And so we need to curtail that, which is just going to go towards their population control myth uh, and, and further that idea. But carbon dioxide is unquestionably good for humanity. And the reason it's good for humanity is because it helps plants grow. It's part of the carbon cycle. You learn about this in eighth grade science. And so the, uh, there's a reason that uh, agricultural operations, for instance, when they have greenhouses in uh, less hospitable climates, they pump in CO2 into the greenhouses to, uh, they call it CO2 fertilization, right. to create higher rates of growth among their plants so that they can sell them faster and more often. Uh, CO2 is good for crops. It's good for growing food. It's good for crop yields in agriculture. And, and it's, therefore, it's good for feeding humanity. Now, wait uh, a minute. The other thing about... You're telling, oh, me I'm the sorry, exact, you're telling me the exact opposite of what we're told, not only by Democratic politicians saying trust the science, but by even by many conservative Republicans, uh, our own President Trump, excellent president, and yet his entire environmental policy was predicated on the idea that it's a good thing to reduce CO2 in the atmosphere. And you're telling us we should want more of it. Tell us more about that. Well, we're you talk about uh, reducing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. We're going to we're going to waste trillions more uh, in government funding to remove CO2 from the atmosphere when it's not even possible. Uh, and I'll explain why in a moment. But it's not even possible to remove enough carbon dioxide from the atmosphere because most of it is naturally occurring. Uh, there are uh, physicists out there that have studied this uh, with. Uh, observational science as well as mathematical uh, equations that have shown that the carbon dioxide that is increasing in our atmosphere is about 98% naturally produced. It's about 2% of the uh, increase in carbon dioxide in our atmosphere over the last 120 years is based on human emissions. So, uh, we can't we can't remove enough CO2 from the atmosphere to account for all of the natural carbon dioxide that's produced by nature, by biomass, by uh, uh, megafauna uh, 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 exhaling and all of those things. Right. Um, and the other uh, fact that the warmest, these uh, the, the cultists can't get around is the true observational fact that throughout geological history, carbon dioxide increases after warming occurs. Carbon dioxide does not occur before the temperature record shows warming, which means that if it doesn't occur beforehand, it can't cause the warming that we observe. So what, what that means is you reverse cause and effect when you see temperatures go up, that actually reduces or releases more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. It's exactly the opposite of cause and effect that they're claiming. 
Now, I hope everybody caught that. Of all of the carbon dioxide in our atmosphere right now, just 2% comes from human being emissions. That's your car, that's your gas stove, uh, that's that's your cow farts, well, it's methane, but you get the idea. That's your breathing, yeah. and yet- I guess told, elephant farts don't count, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess not. Well, they're not in North America, right? But I hear you have it. This is this is critical. I hope people see that. I hope people also understand the last part of what you said there. We're, to we're told time and again, we've been told this since the 1980s, that global warming is caused by CO2 emissions, which cause heat to rise, uh, global temperatures to rise. What you're saying is, in a matter of fact, it's the other way around, that global temperatures rise. And as a result, it looks like CO2 and other greenhouse gases rise in the atmosphere as well. Do I have that right? You do have that right. And there's a whole bunch of physics and, and uh, climatology that goes into why that is. I won't go into it here. We don't have time, but it's uh, I go into detail into it in it in my report on junk science at Restoration of America. But yes, uh, that is exactly right that uh, warming causes a rise in CO2, not the other way around. And yet, our own President Joe Biden and the Biden administration and all his allies in the environmental activist left are touting this thing called net zero. We are supposed to decarbonize the U.S. economy, totally scrub out carbon dioxide from the U.S. economy by 2030. Uh, it's about six years from now from the time of recording. Jeff, what does net zero even mean? And in the light of everything you're saying, should we want to go net zero? Oh, we, cer we certainly should not want to go net zero. Uh, what that means is going 100% electric vehicles. That means going 100% uh, wind and solar and geothermal and all the other alternative uh, energy sources that they've been touting for decades and have not been able to perfect. Uh, I'll give you a perfect example. They've uh, the inform uh, in the Inflation Reduction Act uh, that Joe Biden signed into law includes $7 billion for hydrogen hubs across the nation that are supposed to develop technology that will make hydrogen uh, a uh, an energy source uh, carbon-free energy source that will run our uh, our manufacturing and our vehicles uh, into uh, into the future, and we've been dis we've been studying this technology since the 50s and even before because you know theoretically you can split a water molecule into two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom and create this huge exothermic uh, energy source electric cars were invented before gasoline cars and uh, gasoline took over because it was so much more efficient and so much better uh, and and just so much uh, a, a so much better a uh, a source of energy so uh, it's not because big oil in 1850 decided that they wanted to uh, ruin uh, uh, electric cars none of it existed it was just that the better technology won out in the marketplace for our last question here, I, I want to change gears a little. You know, we've been bashing these people on the left and their policies, um, you know, and they say, well, at least we're trying. Jeff, what is an actual positive, prosperous, good energy and climate policy for the United States look like? Last last remarks. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you're right that uh, that's often the argument you hear is, well, at least we're reducing pollution and we've got to do something. And even if it doesn't work, we're still going to see uh, positive benefits of that. That's completely false. What you're uh, seeing as a result of these policies is a reduction, for instance, in nitrogen uh, fertilizer in the agriculture industry. You're seeing a reduction in efficiency in fuel driven cars, uh, internal combustion engine cars, and you're seeing uh, more tax dollars and resources wasted on technologies that don't work. So what we ought to be doing is pulling more people out of poverty uh, by allowing them to have the freedom of movement provided by an internal combustion engine vehicle and the ability to 
uh, plow their fields and produce crops and efficiently run an agriculture operation with diesel vehicles because electric tractors are never going to be able to uh, last long enough in the field to plow all the stuff and uh, reap all of the crops and, and all of those things, right? You think of a, a, a big combine going through a wheat field and, and reaping all the, the crops. You could never do that with a with the current technology that exists with batteries, for instance. So what they're really looking at doing is reducing our ability to support the amount of humans on the planet and pull them out of poverty. So a, a positive energy uh, policy would do the exact opposite of that. It would uh, allow for people to uh, uh, drive their cars and pay fewer taxes on the fuel that they put in them. And uh, it would it would promote free markets and agriculture that would allow people to, to uh, earn enough profit to make it worthwhile to enter into that industry. So those are the kinds of things that we need to be doing, uh, making our uh, internal combustion engines more efficient, more powerful, more uh, able to run the, the free world and uh, the, all of the human advancements that we've created over the last century. Folks, I really cannot commend to you enough Jeff's outstanding report on this junk science because it also does pave a way for America's energy policy. We don't need to be afraid of these things. We don't need to let the progressive socialists and Marxists destroying this country own this agenda. This is something every conservative can understand and get behind. Jeff, thank you so much for joining the show. Thanks, Hayden. I really appreciate it. I uh, had a blast and let's do it again sometime. Uh, my, me too, my friend. <laughs> That's our show for today, folks. Thank you for tuning in and supporting conservative news media. To read more, visit our website, restoration-news.com. Remember that by working together and praying together, we can restore this country to greatness. May God bless the United States of America. First Right, a new kind of news summary without the liberal slant. Every morning, in your inbox, always free. Subscribe by texting First Right to 30161. That's First Right, all caps, one word, to 30161.